Good morning guys. It is Monday morning and I am working on finishing editing this video that you are about to watch. But I wanted to put a little disclaimer before to let you guys know that I was having camera trouble and I was not feeling very up to myself when I recorded the video so I hope that you guys can excuse the sound of the video and the moving of the camera and me moving around a lot because I was in pain. I hope that you guys like my video. Anyways, I'm sorry about the technicalities. I will improve them on the next video. It has been incredibly hard to focus today because Law & Order is on Ion Channel all day and that is one of my favorite shows. So I was getting ready to record a couple videos for this week. I was going to record the video, my first video, which is uh, what to do if, uh, sorry my brain can't think right now, what to do if you feel like you have a chronic illness and also, um, well my opinion on what to do if you have a chronic illness or if you feel like you have a chronic illness and uh, I started feeling nauseous and and lightheaded and shaky and I don't know this doesn't really happen all too often anymore but I guess today it decided it was gonna happen so I laid down in bed and um, <laughs> Juice is back there licking himself, oh my gosh, why? Anyways, I laid down in bed to try to give my head a rest since it was spinning and I'm nauseous and I'm going to rest for a minute, which is something I normally don't do during the day. I'm not a big nap person, even though I probably should be, I'm not, I... Um, I'm always a person who feels worse after waking up from a nap, so. But, I'm gonna rest my eyes for a few minutes and then hopefully be able to record this video. Hey guys, I took some Zofran and took a little nap and now I'm feeling a little bit better, so I'm going to record some videos for the vlog yay hey guys I'm feeling a little bit better now so I'm gonna record this video for you one of the main reasons that I decided to do this video is because over the last several years when I have become vocal on social media about my chronic illnesses I have noticed that I get sorry I shook the camera there a little bit I have noticed that I get a lot of messages from friends or people in groups asking me what to do if they've been going to the doctor and their doctor's not listening to them or if they have had a bunch of tests done and they're not getting any answers. So I figured I would make a little video with some tips that I have learned over the last 11 years that may be helpful to you guys in getting some answers or helping someone that you may care about or who knows who knows who these tips might help I hope they help someone <laughs> so um <clears throat> the first thing that I would suggest to do is if you do not have a PCP would be to get a PCP what a PC what a PCP is is a primary care provider and they are like your main doctor. They're the doctor you would go to for your annual checkup or for any reason that wouldn't be an emergency, uh, such as if you had a cold or a sore throat or you felt like you might have the flu, you would go to your PCP for that. Well, nowadays a lot of people just go to urgent care, but your PCP is your main doctor. Think about if you have a chronic illness and you have to see many doctors and specialists, your PCP would be like the head of that pyramid 
where all the information gets filtered back to your PCP. They should know everything that's going on with you. They should get notes from every doctor that you see. That being said, if you're going to a PCP and you feel like you're being brushed off or if you do not have a PCP, the first step would be to find one. Do not just pick any doctor and go to them. I learned this the hard way. You want to do some research. You want to get on Google and search for primary care physicians within your area and you want to see what type of reviews they have on there and you want to make sure that you're looking for a doctor that has uh, three, four, and five star reviews for listening, for being attentive, for not rushing their patients. You want to make sure that you have a doctor who's going to take their time and listen to what you have to say. Another way to find a good doctor would be to ask people around you or get on Facebook groups and ask them, hey, I'm looking for a primary care ph physician within XYZ area. I need someone who will really listen to me. Do you guys have any recommendations? That is how I came across the PCP that I have now was recommendations and he's been my doctor for a good little bit now and we have made of huge strides in, in making changes in my health. So, after you find a doctor, you want to make sure that you're prepared for the visit after you call and, of course, make, a, make an appointment. You want to be prepared for the visit. One of the best ways to be prepared for your PCP visit or for any visit, for that matter, is to do what's called symptom tracking. Symptom tracking is where you keep track of your symptoms and what may cause your symptoms for a period of time so that you can take them to the physician and say on Monday, Tuesday, Friday last week I experienced these symptoms. This is what I did prior to, to that. This is what I did after that. If it's pain in your joints or anywhere, they're going to want to know does it change with movement. Um, does laying down help? They, they want to know, they want you to be as open about what happens with your symptoms as possible. And a lot of people, when you say symptom tracking, they're thinking, oh my gosh, i got to keep this journal and it's got to be so elaborate and, and it's daunting and they feel like they don't want to do it. It does not have to be that daunting. You can use a regular calendar, just like this one, that I got at Walmart. And you can, day by day, write down if you're having any symptoms. If you don't have any symptoms, just write N.A. So you know that day that you were fine. And you can look back on that and show the doctor what you had going on on those days. The other benefit to symptom tracking besides having all the information for the doctor is, <laughs> and I'm going to try to say this as uh, proper as I can, oftentimes individuals who have chronic conditions or repeatedly go to the doctor complaining of the same issue will be wrote off as a drug seeker or a liar or a faker or someone looking to have attention. If you go in there with a calendar and you've been writing down for weeks or months how you've been feeling, how is that deniable? And that shows that you are serious about trying to figure out what's wrong with you and that you really want some answers. Another thing that I do after I write down my symptoms is make a list of questions for that doctor. This step is very important. I do not to this day go to any doctor without breaking out my phone and getting on the app and making some questions for my doctor before I go so I know that I'm getting my mind ease before I leave the doctor. Also, sometimes, if I know that I see the GI specialist in, let's say, August, and I know that I go back again in October, every three or four months, I know that I'm going to go back, so I will keep a running list of questions for the doctor throughout those months so that I'm not forgetting, like, say that something happens at the beginning of September, and it was kind of weird, and I'm like, eh, I don't know, maybe I should let the doctor know about that. I write that down in my notebook and write questions about that so that the next time I go, I can be like, hey, you know, this weird thing happened at the beginning of September. I'm not really sure if it's related to what I have going on, but I wanted to make sure I let you know. That leaves me not sitting there trying to go back through all of my memories of all the symptoms that I have to let these doctors know. <clears throat>
and when you're making the questions, it, make sure that when you're thinking about making these questions that you're thinking about what will ease my mind, what will give me the answers that I'm looking for. And I know sometimes that there isn't an answer for what you're looking for, and that is probably one of the most frustrating things with a chronic illness is oftentimes there isn't any answers, and you just have to go with the answers that you have. But you do need a physician that you know will listen to your questions even if they are unable to answer them at the present moment. <clears throat> so once you're prepped for the visit, you've made your uh, symptom journal and you've wrote down your questions. Speaking of symptom journals, in the, in the description of the video, I'm going to put a link to my Pinterest Surviving Chronically board where I've posted some or pinned some very good examples of symptom tracking so that you guys can get an idea that it doesn't have to be some elaborate thing. It can be easily done on your phone. It can be done from a, from a notebook. It can be done from a calendar. It can be done any way that suits you just as long as it gets done. <clears throat> I know you're probably thinking, but Patricia, I really don't want to track my symptoms. I really don't want to go to the doctor. I'm really tired of doctors. I'm anxious about the doctor. I don't I don't want to deal with this anymore, and I hear that a lot. I, myself, have experienced that, and that feeling is an overwhelming, oh, it, it takes a lot out of you if, when you continually struggle with a problem that other people do not understand and you do not know how to stop. And it causes anxiety about going to the doctor. However, my reminder to you is, you deserve to know what's going on with you. You deserve to have your time to ask your questions. And also you deserve to have whatever tests you may need to figure out what's going on with you. So please try not to get anxious and, and just go in there prepared. If you go in there prepared, there's no reason to be anxious. When you get to the visit, it will be just like any other little family doctor visit. You'll go in there and they'll check your blood pressure and do everything that they do. And when the doctor comes in, you want to make sure that you have your symptom track ready and your questions ready. And you tell the doctor, look, this is what's going on. Be upfront from the beginning. And hopefully in doing that, the doctor will either A, know what's going on already and be able to prescribe you some medications or send you to a specialist that may be able to help you in whatever way that you need to help or B they will be able to run some tests to get some answers and you may have to wait for those tests to come back whatever they may, may be oftentimes their uh, blood tests and imaging depending on what symptoms you have going on and oftentimes once you get those it'll take a little while to get the results back and the doctor should call you and when the doctor calls you with the results, if they are prepared as they should be, they should have a game plan ready for you about what to do next to start on the road of getting you some type of relief from the problem that you have been experiencing. <clears throat> Oftentimes, when people have chronic conditions, they feel alone. They feel like nobody understands them. And I laugh because I, I remember back in the beginning of my illness how so overwhelming it was and how I was so tired of hearing the same thing from the doctor. All your results are coming back normal. All this is coming back normal. And we're not seeing your problem. And it, I got ignored until it became a fatal, near fatal problem twice. <laughs> And then they had to pay attention to what was going on. And But had I been prepared when I was going and took the advice that I'm giving you, you guys right now, I probably would not have had the extent of the problem that I'm having now because I would have been a little more prepared. I, I'm not taking on the fault of the doctors for not listening to me in the beginning, but I am placing a little bit of the blame on myself where it should be for not being prepared. <clears throat> And another tip I want to give you guys is once you go to the doctor and you, you start going to see specialists and you get the test in, 
I would recommend to start getting copies of your medical records and keeping a close eye on them because unfortunately doctors are human like we are and even though they use computers they errors are still made and things can be put into your chart that are not correct so if you do not keep an eye on your records those incorrect things are going to stay in there and may prevent you from getting the answers that you are working so hard to get <clears throat> Also, I'm, I'm going to say this, when I was thinking about this blog, I put a question out in one of my favorite groups that I'm actually admin of in, on Facebook for chronic illness, and if you guys are, are wondering what that group is, let me know and I'll get you guys a link to check it out. I asked the people in the group what they felt was a tip that they would give somebody who had been struggling with chronic illness and wasn't really getting any answers. And the, the most said tip was to find your people, to become members of a group, or find other people that you know and are aware that have chronic conditions and start talking to them because they understand and, and more than likely they are wanting someone to talk to as well. Do not stay in silence and stay alone. Look for your people. Look for your tribe. And do not, do not face this alone. There is no reason to face this alone when there are millions of us out there who understand what you are going through. And another thing I wanted to add in here is I know that many of you have probably experienced some very terrible things at the hands of doctors, nurses, and medical professionals. Things said to you or you treated in a way that was totally uncalled for. As a matter of fact, why don't we do that? Why don't some of you tell me what is the worst thing you have ever had said to you by a doctor or a medical professional in the comments? You guys share yours and I will share mine on Twitter in the next couple of days and we'll see if we guys have, if any of us have experienced some of the same uh, judgments and <laughs> I guess I would call it mistreatment because that's exactly what it is. Uh, but if you have experienced that, do not let that deter you from finding a new doctor. They are not all the same, even though it may feel that way. They are not all the, sa all the same. I can't talk today. Probably the, the Zofran that I took to try to feel better to be able to do this video. Um, do not let one or two bad apples ruin the bunch when there is a doctor out you do not give up. If you have to go to 10 doctors, do it. Because trust me, I have went to my fair share of doctors to get where I'm at. I wasn't going to stop until I got the answers that I needed. Until I started to understand what was going on with my body. So that I could be a mom and be a person again. And you deserve that too. We all deserve that. <clears throat> well, those are all the tips that I have for you guys today. I hope that I have given you some tips that will help you to get some answers that you need. If you have any more questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments and I will answer them. I always check my comments and will get back to you as quickly as possible. Also I've put a link in, well several links in the description for you guys to follow me on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. I try to spread out my content and do different things in different places and make it fun for all my followers on different platforms. So I hope you guys will click and join me on the other platforms. Also, click the subscribe button and the little bell that says all notifications so that when I upload a new video, which will be several times this week, that you will get a notification and you can stay up to date with what's happening here at Surviving Chronically. I hope you guys have an awesome day and remember you are not alone. Wait guys, I was about to go to bed and I realized that I forgot to add a tip in there for you guys. Probably one of the very important tips. If you are going to the doctor and you are asking for them to pay attention to you and, a and answer your questions and you get blown off or you get treated in a way that is not what you feel is how you should be treated, there are steps to take to make sure that the that the doctors pay attention to you 
most all doctor offices and hospitals have what is called a patient care advocate or a patient care coordinator and this is the person who is meant to speak on behalf of the patient and help you get the help and care that you need within their facility oftentimes you can just ask for the number for the patient care coordinator or the charge nurse for the facility it depends on where you're going however if you uh, are going to a doctor and you feel like you need someone to step in and help you they are there for that purpose also if you are going to the doctor and you ask about a patient care coordinator or a patient care advocate and they tell you that there isn't one drop me a comment and I will do what I can to find out what the process would be where you're going to file a complaint and to get the ball rolling to get you some help with the physicians that you are trying to see that is the tip that I forgot to give you guys. Now I'm going to allow myself to go to sleep. Me and the juice are laying in bed and we are ready to knock out. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.